All right, now we get into um, this figure. Sometimes immunologists refer to the immune system as, as having two arms. One arm being the B cells, the other arm being T lips. And um, so B and T cells, and they're all triggered from the three AGs. As we discussed before the break, the B cells have membrane bound antibodies that can directly bind the free AGs, the free antigens. However, T cells require an antigen presenting cell to present a piece of the antigen to it to activate their, their clones and subpopulation. So that's one important difference between B's and T's. T cell activation requires <coughs> AG presentation. by an antigen presenting cell, APC for short. Cells that have this APC function include macrophage, dendritic cells, Uh, B cells. That's it, as far as I know. Let's go with those three. That's in terms of the APC function. So on the figures, <coughs> excuse me, it's this purple cell. They're just taking a piece of the foreign invader, the antigen, and they present it and they activate the different subpopulations of T cells. So T cell mediated immunity, here's a more complete figure of their activation response. And this shows you some more details. For example, well, we already know that they mature in the red marrow. Then they go to the thymus, which is uh, basically just superior to the heart. <clears throat> and they undergo further maturation and selection into two subclasses called CD4 and CD8. Remember, thymus is pretty much why they call them T cells. I'll tell you kind of what goes on in there. It's kind of one of my last slides here. Well, anyways, a T cell that's a CD4. Those are the T helper cells. And the cells that are called um, well, the CD8 cell, those are the T killer cells, or the cytotoxic T cells. So TC for short. Um, What this figure also teaches is that, um, here, here are the APCs basically, and um, what we know is that the CD4, they're restricted to interacting with cells that are class two MHC. Restricted to interacting with, I'll put just Roman numeral two, MHC, contrast with the CD8s, um, they're restricted to interacting with cells that present class one MHC protein. MHC stands for Major Histocompatibility Complex. Doing that out. 
major histone compatibility complex. It's a membrane bound, membrane bound protein. And they call it major histocompatibility complex, also called human leukocyte antigen. I, I tend to go with MHC. Um, now, you all study histology now. Histo refers to tissue. These um, proteins have a very interesting history. Uh, back in the 70s, they would do these experiments, these tissue graph experiments. And they would use the mouse model. <clears throat> in particular, they would breed mice. And they would use inbred stra strains of mice. So when you breed mice, you have a parent, you cross them, and they have a litter. And then you just take the litter, and then the brothers and sisters, and just cross them. OK, it's OK, it's okay to do for mice. Right? And you just keep crossing them. And they call that an inbred strain. So think about it. You have a very homogenous genetic profile, don't you? Because every single um, mouse in that strain has the same genetics from the first two parents. But let's say you have another strain, okay, another cross. So you have all these different strains. And um, basically, if you took a tissue and grafted it from one, one mouse to another within the same strain, the graft would be accepted. But what do you think happens if you take a tissue graft and go from one strain to another strain? It is rejected. So with that model, the question they asked is, what are the genes or complex of genes responsible for the tissue graft rejection? Well, they found them, and it's called, they called it histocompatibility complex. And then they went dug further, and they said, well, what are the most potent genes within this complex that are responsible for the tissue graft rejection? And they called them MHC. Okay, so that's why they're, it doesn't make sense why they're in your immune lecture. Because what's responsible, what's rejecting the graft? The white blood cells are attacking it, right? And these are the ones that are responsible for kicking off the T cells anyway. So um, that's where this term comes from. MHC, you need to study them in an immune lecture. And so um, what we see here is that you interact with class two, you, you get your helper T's. You interact with class one, and you get your cytotoxic T cells. <clears throat> and so then the MHC require you know, a little more explanation. Class one MHC, the CD8 cells will become cytotoxic T cells, which remember, class one CD8. They are activated by antigen fragments linked to class one MHCs of APCs. Okay, CD4 cells become the alpha T's. Link them to the class two MHC. You just keep that straight in your head. Um, so more about class one. So when you study MHC, I kind of came up with this outline of questions that I actually like to ask myself to keep straight in my head what they do. So it's good for you to learn as well. So let's see. Okay. So. Um, Class one on this side, right? Class one MHC. Here's our here's questions to keep track of as you study them. What cells have class one MHC? All of them, except for cells that don't have a nucleus because they can't strike can they can't transcribe the gene, right? So which cells have class one? All cells. We'll we'll say except. RBCs, because they don't have a nucleus that's ejected, right? Except cells without a nucleus. So basically, think of this. All cells are producing MH1, MHC1. And so it's like, this is the body's waving the flag. This is, hey, where, where are you? Don't attack me. You're, you're my immune system. I'm, I'm, I'm self. I'm self. This is the, the signal that signals your immune system not to attack yourself. This is the self 
signal, right? There's other things too, but it's one of them. All right, the second thing, um, <coughs> what do they display? <coughs> what do all these cells that have MHC1, what do they, what do they display in endogenous antigen? endogenous AVG. Endo means within. A cell takes a piece of itself from the inside and they present it to the outside. So when the white blood cell comes along and says, oh yeah, I interact with MHC1 and look, there's a self AG there, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna move along. I'm not gonna mount an immune response in a cell it's got MHC1 and it has a self AG. Now it turns out, what kind of antigen is this? It's usually self. But in times where you are sick or have cancer or something, you know, some viruses are caused by, cause cancer and could be self or non self. So that third thing, the AG, can be self could be non-self. AG can't be self or non-self. Non-self is when you actually have a virus infection. Because then the virus is inside the cell, you take a piece of something and present it, turns out to be a non-self. Here's a picture of that. Okay, those, those three things. <clears throat> CD8s interact with any cell that has MHC1, and it's most of them in your body except cells that don't have a nuke. So imagine this cell is any of those cells that, got, that have class one MHC. They take a piece of themselves from the inside, they just mount it in that groove of the protein structure, and it's presented. If a CD8 cell were to come along, it would recognize, bind, but not trigger an immune response. It should move on. But, if it were a virus-infected cell, you would assume that it would trigger an immune response. So it could be self or non-self in that little groove. So for the class twos, it's a little different. Which cells have class two? So for the class twos, the cells that have class two MHC are the cells that have the APC function. <coughs> Cells that have APC function present class two MHC. And I've already listed those cell types. There are three, they're on the slide. Dendritic, macrophage, T cells. They have that function. Okay, what the what do they display? Well, because of the kind of cells that they are, they're all going to always present exogenous antigens, something that they've already phagocytosed. Present exogenous AGs. So contrast exogenous with endogenous. Right? It's something that these cells have phagocytized and they take a piece and they put it in their groove and well, it's always gonna be non-cell. So here's a picture of that. So it's one of these cells that has the APC function. They're phagocytizing the pathogen. They're breaking it up and putting a piece of that non-cell pathogen in the groove to be presented to CD4 cell to kick off an immune response. CD4s are the ones that actually do it. They get it going. <clears throat> so T cell activation of a CD4, let, let's talk about that now. Okay, so there, there's a process and there's a lot of molecules that the cell has to recognize. And so let's outline this. Um, well, it already is an outline form, but let's kind of like apply it to this picture. Okay, so we got a CD4 helper cell that will be activated in case you're sick and the APC is presenting uh, the non-self exogenous AG to it. Right. 
so it's uh, it kind of helps to draw this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that big purple cell, that's the APC. And then that, uh, well, obviously the blue cell is your a our uh, helper T cell, the CD4. That's our class um, class two MHC. Okay. So I'm referring to this recognized as MHC two. That's one. I'll just put a Roman numeral two here, class two MHC. This is our CD4 cell. Now to interact with that class two MHC, um, let's remember that they're always presenting some piece of exogenous non-self, viral AG, something. So that's the non-cell AG in red. And to interact with it, the CD4 cell presents a TCR receptor. stands for T cell receptor. So that says TCR. A couple of things. TCR of the T helper cell, it interacts with MHC2. It is also specific for this viral AG. Okay. cell receptor specific for this viral AG. To stabilize this, you have, they have illustrated in that group. That's actually the CD4. Hence the name CD4 cell. It stabilizes that. This will trigger a cell signal, call it signal one. Now, to prevent premature activation, you need a second signal. So those other molecules they got there are like the co-stimulation. They have one color of yellow. Trace in black, so I can see yellow on the whiteboard. That ligand that's sticking out there, responsible for co stimulation, is a B7 ligand. B7. C4 cells will present a molecule that interacts with it, 
It's usually um, CD28. CD28. That's your co-stimulation. Co-stimulation. To add to that, um, the APC is also secreting interleukin-1 as another stimulatory thing to aid in activation. IL-1. <coughs> Well, they happen to use also red dots, so it's IL-1. Boom. That'll help with the stimulation. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the slide and make sure we outline everything. Number one, TCR recognizes MHC2. Got it. Check. Also, it's specific for this viral AEG. Check that box. CD4 stabilizes this for signal one. Check that box. Now the co-stimulation is the B7 CD28 along with IL1. Check that box. That sets forth signal two to complete activation. So basically, you're turning this cell on and it'll change, it'll activate, it'll do other things like, for example, I put this slide in. It's a different thing showing you signal one, signal two, and your activated T cell. Um, it'll upregulate other CD um, molecules like CD154, which helps upregulate inflammation and activates other APCs. So there are differences between a cell that has not been activated that is activated. This is point. So, so these signals. will make the cell produce other things like CD154. It is now activated. And it'll do other things like secrete IL2. Okay? Secretes IL2. So there are markers that a T cell has been activated. You got both signals. And it's good to have two. It's good to have redundancy. So you don't have premature activation. <clears throat> this is like a for sure. If both signals kick off, you know you have an infection. You activate and you know it's an immune response. Now without this co-stimulation, you can kind of become tolerant to that antigen and you won't mount an immune response. You don't divide, don't secrete cytokines like IL-2. Basically, without the T helper cells, there is no immune response. So that speaks to the importance of the cells and also the importance of coactivation. Okay. So if you have proper activation, how do they quote unquote help? So I've got a few slides to kind of show us what they do. So now let's take it to the next step. We got sick, we got infected. We've triggered an immune response. The CD4s are activated. And we'll clean this out. cells that are now activated, activated, four cells, help activate other cells. So in this slide, what you see is, um, to help with teeth, it helps the dendritic cell express those co-stimulatory molecules that we just talked about. It helps APCs express uh, 
co-stimulatory molecules. Also, number three, with that IL-2, you're helping to stimulate um, the CD8 cell. Secretes IL-2, oh, I'm sorry, that's IL-2, uh, I-L-2. And the name of these molecules, IL-1, IL-2, interleukin, right? Secreted between leukocyte types of cells. It's very, uh, makes sense, makes sense. Secrete IL-2 to help activate CD8 cells. Those are the cytotoxic ones. And here, here we see it secreting IL-4 to help activate a B cell. start the immune response, and those pictures can help you do that. So you activate a CD8 cell, it's one of the things it does. What, is, what does that cell do? They can, well, in a word, you know, in two words, it can administer a lethal hit when activated. figure shows how it kind of like secretes perforins and granzymes to help punch holes and kill virus infected cells. So the lethal hits administered by perforins punch a hole and granzymes to destroy the pathogen or pathogen infected cell. It's not shown here. You get the activated CD8 cell, which is now activated from the helper T cell. Boom. And then perforin, granzymes will enter the help of, uh, I'm sorry, secrete it from here to here. The target cell will then uh, die somehow, maybe apoptosis, career in cell death. So I have some practice questions here. And um, this slide is here because this is usually the day we have a blood typing lab, but ours isn't until uh, tomorrow. Right? We just had a lab practice for today, so there's not time for a lab. But those are good review questions um, if you wanted to practice. So this kind of leads us into the lymphocyte system. Just start that. Since I canceled the quiz, I think I have more time. I'll just stop here. Oh, but, uh, tomorrow I'll teach on lymphatics, and I'll also start respiratory. I'll see you tomorrow.